And good hello once again. This is uh, LC Lupus, and I'll be talking about utopianism, as the title w- would suggest. Um, so, this is the fifth episode, video, or whatever you want to call it, in this series about a, a utopian project. Um, I think it is best because I often refer back to certain things. So it's often best to go and actually listen to the previous episodes first for in case. But today's episode is all about consumption, goods, and materialism. Now, I did actually briefly mention in the last video, at the end of the last video, that when I say materialism, I'm actually talking about very specifically um, more so being materialistic rather than the philosophy of materialism. Uh, which is very, very different uh, because this this sort of utopian project is at its core very materialist. So, uh, but I'm talking about here uh, more so, you know, being materialistic. Okay, so when it comes to consumption, goods, and uh, materialism, in general, this society, we've spoken about it, you know, last bunch of times, where we've spoken about how this society should essentially be built around the central premise that... Um, Everybody essentially gets what they need. So, you know, from each according to their ability to each according to their need or needs. So there shouldn't be an abundance of anything. There shouldn't be more than is necessary. You know, so for instance, there shouldn't be food waste. Food should be produced to feed the population. And that is what it should do. It should feed the population. Uh, It shouldn't be thrown away. Huge amounts of food thrown away. Uh, We could be feeding everybody on earth, but we don't because... Why not just let people die? Seems like the, you know, obviously seems like the smarter option to just let people die. Much, uh, you know, much less horrifying that way, you know. So anyway, so when it comes to this, you know, consumption and and goods and all that jazz, um, what we want to do, remember we're going for a no waste kind of society. We're going for a society in which people have what they need, not what they you know, that because of a, and, and this is also something that I'm going to get into in the next video, actually, in this the sixth video, when we're getting into education, where essentially people need to be taught from a young age about the society that they live in. And the thing is, that's what happens now, but we're taught terrible things. And so we should be taught better things. And um, to all the people who will say immediately that, a utopian or more so utopian society like this wouldn't work because it's very idealistic. Um, it is. And uh, hopefully you understand that that's what utopianism means. Uh, it, that's, the, that's the point. That it's supposed to be wildly optimistic and probably won't happen. But, you know, you, you try anyway. So, how are we going to do this? How do we make it a society in which people are not materialistic in which people are not all about consumerism and all that kind of stuff how do we how do we do that how do we do these kind of things so firstly as we have spoken about in previous videos work is completely different to how it is now and also of course money doesn't exist it would be a cashless society so the idea that you need things to to display your wealth or whatever would be nonsense and unnecessary like that just won't exist instead we should be focusing actually on fewer goods on because, for instance, when you look at something like fashion, and when I say fashion, I don't mean like high fashion. I mean the things people actually wear, which is usually fast fashion. Fast fashion is an awful, awful business, and it's just it moves extremely quickly, and it is all about how to manipulate people into spending their money. Uh, I've, I've before actually on like YouTube kind of, not on YouTube, on, uh, on Instagram, kind of logged a few instances whenever I see it, whenever I see like an egregious example of it, I sort of log it. Um, and it will be the kinds of posters, for instance, that you see inside clothing stores. Clothing stores are a perfect example of, of sort of consumerism because you go into a clothing store and it's all about trying to get you to buy especially buying on credit, like they are, well, at least in South Africa, pretty much all of them are happy for you to do like lay buying kind of things with, you know, yes, now of course you can, you can get it for free now. And then, you know, you just pay it later and it's interest fee free for, for three months. And then after that, we're going to do interest. And most people, because they feel that they need to buy, 
they will overbuy and they won't be able to pay it back. And that will be just a lovely endless cycle of trying to pay back your debt and not being able to. So clothing stores like to do that. Clothing stores also like to do a thing where there's constantly new clothes, a fast fashion in particular. There's always new clothes. So it fosters that whole idea of FOMO, fear of missing out. A lot of people fall for this kind of thing. They're afraid that if they don't buy it now, then they'll never get it. Or if they don't buy it now, then they then they won't be able to be part of the, the current zeitgeist. So, for instance, you could also look at media. In media, um, media releases, you know, something, say, a book or a movie or a game or whatever, and you feel that you need to buy it immediately so that you'll be able to talk about it. Even though that's not necessary, and you would actually save a lot more money if you just waited. Uh, it's not necessary to buy things immediately. Um, although, of course, if everybody waited, the entire system would collapse. So the thing is, the system is built on this kind of consumerism. They want you to buy, buy, buy. And with clothing, with fast fashion, basically, every shop is restocked with new things like every week. There's new items that are coming in. So the idea is that every time you go, there's going to be new items. And that means that they won't be there next week, possibly. Um, so you need to buy now. That kind of system is terrible. So instead, we need to focus on fewer goods, not mass production of goods, where also most of the goods get thrown away, because that's what happens with most of those clothes. They, they, they don't all sell. They are produced at high volumes for a cheap amount. You do not need to sell them all. You only need to sell enough to make a profit. You don't need to, to actually sell everything. In this kind of society, clothes would not be a thing that you just go and buy. Clothes would instead be something that you get made for you. So... That would also mean it's high quality. That's another thing about fast fashion. It's usually low quality. It's mass produced. Uh, nothing is unique. Everything is exactly the same. Now, if you got rid of that, I would reckon it would be a lot better in general. So you want to have fewer goods and in general reduce consumption because consumption is a bad thing. You know, consumption is actually bad. Just buying, 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 buying is a bad thing. And it also erodes the way that we interact with the world. So say, for instance, there's a lot of conservative thinkers who love to rant and rave every uh, Christmas that there's a war on Christmas because the, the corporations aren't exploiting their faith enough anymore. Uh, instead, the religions are exploiting the sort of uh, the culture rather than their religion. And as we all know, Jesus Christ was very, very hardcore capitalist and he wanted people to, um, you know, have you know, his name, having things like the word Christ emblazoned on all sorts of goods so that it could be purchased. Uh, that's what that's what Christ wanted, uh, as we know uh, from the Gospels. He, he was uh, in the Gospels. He specifically says he hates Marx. In case um, somebody listened to that and didn't realize that was a joke, that was a joke. Um, so Consumption is bad. Consumption and consumerism are all about exploiting us and trying to make us feel like we have to get the thing. And we have to get it. And we have to get the new thing because the new thing is going to go away. And that is just a terrible way to do things. It, it's also this um, consumerism also destroys things like art. So let's say you take you know regular art as in the, the, the thing when the common usage term art, which would be like paintings. Paintings nowadays are basically an elaborate like money laundering scheme and that isn't what art should be and then say movies movies are producer that can create the merchandise that can be sold alongside us and they can kind of sell you on this idea that you need to to keep watching essentially um games of course are sold with things like dlc added where there are um if you pay extra you'll get extra things which usually also those extra things are usually quite like low effort because they can't, they can't risk putting the really, really good stuff behind a separate paywall, behind a second paywall. They have to give you the good stuff in the main payment because otherwise people would get very, very angry. So that's the kind of stuff people do, you know. Um, and art is then destroyed pretty much because of these things where art becomes um, an aspect of, of consumption. Another good example, which I don't know about this as much because I don't really listen to a lot of contemporary music, but I watched a video... You know, time is meaningless. It could have been a year ago. It could have been two years ago. Who knows? Uh, it could have been, it wouldn't have been last week, but it could have been any time. Maybe last year, maybe the year before that, maybe the year before that. Who knows? But about how now, apparently, a lot of hip-hop music is now extremely short. 
where if you listen to a lot of sort of older hip hop songs, they're they're much denser and they they don't necessarily get to the hook immediately, whereas a lot of um, modern ones kind of immediately jump into a hook and a chorus. Uh, and you might think, well, why is it immediately jumping into like, like the, the song doesn't really have like meaning. It's just there to make you sort of dance or something um, like to make your, your head bob to. And then it turns out the reason for that is because people get paid per stream on things like Spotify. You don't get paid by duration. You pay get paid per song. So what's better for your money, you know, for, for your income, having one seven minute long song or having, you know, like four minutes and a half long songs. So music isn't a lot, is even affected by capitalism and is utterly eroded by it. So consumption is destroying everything. So we need to have a change in mindset. We need to stop viewing it this way. We need to stop viewing it as something that is monetary, right? And um, this is difficult for a lot of people. I know it's difficult for a lot of people, but... You don't need clothes all the time. You don't need things as soon as they come out. It is unnecessary. A book is just as enjoyable when it's 100 years old versus one day old. The book is just as enjoyable. If you were to have a community, say, for instance, in this kind of society, we have quite tight-knit communities, the internet should obviously still exist because the internet is very useful, and I love the internet, and the internet is also a very, very democratizing way of, of producing things. And if, say, with the internet, we were able to strip out the capitalism too, so no no ads, everything is just free on the internet, people could actually create what they want to create, you know. But anyway, so we need to have a change in this mindset. We need to stop thinking about it as we need to get the new thing. You need to realize that you do not need the new thing. You do not need the new clothes. You need enough clothes to live. You don't need a walk-in closet full of clothes. As a matter of fact, I'd say in many ways, you don't need a closet full of clothes. Most people can get by just fine with a handful of clothes. You do not need that many. It is unnecessary. And you might say, well, uh, it's something I really enjoy. Okay, that's, I understand that, but a lot of people also like enjoy gambling. People enjoy things in capitalism that we know are not good things. So yes, you might, you might love buying things, but that's the problem. And you need to try to remind yourself that that is actually a bad thing and that you should instead be aiming towards reducing your consumption and reducing your dependence on consumerism because consumerism is, is, is terrible. So um, we want to get rid of this whole materialistic viewpoint where we have to have things. But now if we had a cashless society, there wouldn't be a need, a need you know, for you to have a nicer thing than your neighbor. Because if all your neighbors have essentially the same things, but also not the same things, because they have clothes, like, this is a thing that some people will understand. Probably actually a lot of people understand this. Not everybody gets to go into a clothing store and find something that fits them, especially when it comes to women. Women tend to have body shapes that require specific cuts of clothes. And you might have two pairs of jeans right like next to each other. And they're both, they're labeled the same, but they have a different cut. So you might buy the one being like, oh, this one can fit me. I'll just buy the other one. Turns out the other one was a different cut. It just looked exactly the same to like the naked eye, but it was cut differently. Uh, and so now you're screwed. You don't, you know, now you're wearing that. So if, for instance, all clothes were tailored. So you go to the tailor, they make you your clothes and that's your clothes. And when you need new clothes, you go there and they'll give you new clothes and they'll tailor it to you. What what do you want your clothes to be? Which I would say is a much stronger expression of, of your personality than whatever you buy at H&M or Zara or whatever other places. You know, those... Like, it doesn't actually reveal anything about who you are. It reveals that you are capable of buying things and that you like that color. But imagine if you could instead get something that is actually tailored to you, that that is made for you, and also made of high-quality materials because those clothes are, like, made to break. They wear out, they break. If you get clothes that are actually good and they don't wear out, they don't break, they'll be so much better for you and for the environment as well. Because humans do not need anywhere near as many clothes as we have. Uh, Fast fashion is especially just 
addled our brains to this kind of nonsense. So we, with our cash, won't really have the same need to be like, oh, yes, I need to be, you know, look better than, than Mr. and Mrs. Smith next door. You know, you, you can't have a nicer car than them because no one has a car. Your clothes are tailored to you just like theirs are tailored to them. And everybody's clothes are also like, what color do you want? What patterns do you want? How do you want it to look? So it's not about, oh, you know, you you have this more expensive clothing. Like, no, that's not true. Because let's say, for instance, um, someone like me, I have this weird sort of texture sensitivity thing. I can look at clothing and know that I will be repulsed by touching it. Like, I, I have clothes that I touch and my entire body starts shivering as soon as I feel the fabric. I can't have certain fabrics. I, I just can't. I need much sort of lighter kind of fabrics. That Those sort of thick clothes, I can't have those. I need thin clothes that I hardly feel on my body. I need those. Now, I think that a lot of those kind of thicker ones tend to be more expensive and ones with like all sorts of fancy materials. Like, say, I don't know, something like a felt feeling or something. That stuff feels awful to me. But if you are somebody who has that kind of thing, it's more expensive, but I would hate wearing it. So depending on the, the rarity of the item, because remember, money doesn't exist. So it's not actually more expensive. It could just be rarity or the effort that went into making it, whatever. It doesn't matter because you chose what you wanted to have, you know? So that is a thing that, that we should instead be trying to focus on. Like, I wish I could get tailored clothes. Uh, my fiance, I'm sure, would love to get tailored clothes. But tailored clothes are expensive um, because they just are. Um, also, for instance, something that I just hate so much and I, in my utopian world, they would be burned, every single one of them, tags. Tags on the neck of clothing. Just awful, just awful. It makes me, I cut them out. Even if I mangle the shirt in the process, tags are awful. And in this kind of world, you wouldn't need a tag because everything would be tailored to you. It wouldn't be any brands. Like brands shouldn't exist. Brands are not your friends. And you should, if you are defining yourself by what shoes you wear, by whether you wear Adidas or Nike, that's a bad thing. You have been brainwashed by corporations to make you believe that your personality is determined by a shoe, by something that you have to pay money for, and also a lot of money for. I buy the cheapest possible shoes I can buy. I don't know what these, the shoes I'm wearing, I, I struggle to find shoes because I have very big feet. So I struggle to find shoes. I have never had the luxury of being a consumeristic kind of person. And I think that's kind of saved me a lot because I, I feel no kind of uh, desire towards clothes because most clothes, especially brand name clothes, feel awful. They, they are made of fabric that is just terrible on my skin. Um, I go and I buy like these really cheap t-shirts and then they're, I'm happy. And then whenever I get a, some expensive t-shirt that has an awful print on the front, it feels terrible. And the thing is, that has kind of made it that I don't have this consumer mindset, which is lucky for me and it's going to be difficult for a lot of people. But it'll be difficult for this generation. It wouldn't be difficult for your kids it wouldn't be difficult for their kids because they would not be raised in a society that, that dictates that they must have this kind of clothing. So it will be better. It'll be better if that is not the case, if you don't have those kind of things. Um, which, yeah, is, is sad. And, and also, of course, even though I've, I've spoken about this before, the idea of a library economy is very important because when it comes to consumption, we don't just consume clothes and such. Like, let's say with clothes that uh, the kids' clothes, you know, they grow out of them. Don't throw them away. Instead, what they should, what should happen to them is that they get because you do not really want to tailor clothes to a child because they grow too quickly. You tailor an adult, not a child, unless it's a special event. Children should just be able to get clothes that have been worn by previous children. You know, basically, pass me downs or hand me downs, sorry, that's the name. Hand me downs. Just have those. It's much, much better. And if they were properly controlled, properly, say, cleaned, everything like that, it would be a, a great solution, which would produce far, far less waste. And if it's made out of high quality things, because, for instance, if you don't have a kid, sometime you should just go into a, because, okay, I don't have a kid, but 
Uh, my sister's 10 years younger than me, so, you know, I do know these things at least a bit. Go into, like, most places that sell babies' clothes. They're, like, cheap quality. They'll be, like, very, like you'll get, like, a lot of, you know, basically um, 100% polyester kind of things, which you wouldn't really do to an adult as much because they don't like it. But a baby is not very clever. And they, they don't have a way. They also don't have recourse. They can't tell you, I don't like this feeling or whatever. So it's it's a, it's a thing that should be changed where it should be that the things that you need to have for you, sure, everything else should be essentially a library economy, right? You don't need to own your own tools. You can go to the tool section of the library and take those out if you need them. Um, we've spoken about this before, you know, cars, all sorts of things. We don't need to make as many things as we make because say if we just had public transport, and the public transport it does you takes you to work, takes you home, allows you to get wherever the hell you need to go, all that kind of stuff. That is great. What use is a car now? There's no point to a car unless there's very specific reasons. The number of cars would absolutely plummet. I think cars are still very useful, like emergency services. You definitely want to have a car. You know, you want an ambulance to be able to get to your house specifically. Not uh, not around the corner and stuff like that. So there would be reasons for it. But um, yeah. So we want to overall essentially have fewer goods, reduce our, our consumerist mindset, try to change um, these kind of viewpoints. And also, of course, get rid of obsolescence. Like things are made with obsolescence. I did explain this earlier to the news, the word obsolescence. Modern clothes in fast fashion are made to break. They, they just break. They're, they're bad clothes. They're poor quality. And so we need to get rid of that. That's obsolescence. The whole idea there is when the clothing is, is broken, you have to buy another one. It's planned obsolescence. It's not just with like appliances, like, you know, everything made by like a company, uh, like a, a tech company is pretty much built obsolescence. But yeah, so, and uh, yeah, I would say pretty much that's, that's kind of everything. You don't need to have so many things. It is unnecessary. Uh, the only reason that we need all these things is because we don't, you know, like the reason that you need your own like uh, book library is because a lot of libraries are terrible. A lot of like actual book libraries are terrible. The reason you need to have your own kitchen is because there's no communal eatery. The reason you need so many of these things is because you, we, we don't help each other. We don't work with each other anymore. A house doesn't actually need these things, a home. Uh, but that I spoke about in previous videos. So, okay, I think we're going to end off here. Uh, I think this should be a good a good place to stop. Um, if you enjoyed this, please check out the other ones and also do the usual YouTube things like comment, subscribe, uh, other words, uh, share, uh, be, 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 be nice about it, tell people that it's great, you know. Anyway, uh, other than that, you can check me out on Twitter at LC underscore lupus. You can also check me out, I think, on the same moniker at uh, on Instagram. But Instagram, I mostly just post pictures of nature and animals. Uh, the ones that live with us and also the ones that um, get crash at home. Uh, and ones we just find out and about because, you know, cuties. So that's pretty much all I do on the, the social medias. Other than that... In the description, you'll find um, a link to Wolf Dog Publishing. That's my company that publishes my writing at the moment. Maybe one day in the future, it will publish others. There is, I have some plans, which by the time this publishes, because I record all these in advance by the time this, but this is a bad idea to talk about this. Anyway, you can find my first book, The Cyborg Wilderness, uh, if you want to check it out. It is a sort of a eco-fiction about a uh, post-apocalyptic world in which a single cyborg from, you know, the people that killed humanity, a single cyborg survived. Uh, and now the war is over. There's no one left. No one's in charge. And um, she wanders through the wasteland trying to find some kind of purpose, some kind of meaning. And uh, yeah, I like that story. And it's also written in an intentionally stunted style. So it, it, it's all, it's very sort of uh, simple sentences and compound sentences, uh, trying to minimize the amount of, of um, complex sentences as much as possible. There's no commas, there's no exclamation marks, etc. It's very uh, experimental. 
you know. Um, hopefully, if that sounds interesting, you enjoy it. Go check it out. Uh, I got like links in the description and everything. Uh, other than that, I hope that you have a great day, week, and month ahead. And ta-ta.